All right, so there we go. So now we're recording. Welcome, everyone. Um, I haven't seen, let's see, yeah, it's just on. Thankfully, it's alphabetically sorting this. Hey, Steve's here. Awesome. Steve's a, a buddy of mine who lives here in the Dallas area. Uh, it was funny. We both happened to use Auto Hotkey when we were working together, and uh, we didn't realize we both used Auto Hotkey. It was really cool to realize it. And as let me let me make you a um, just in case I I was gonna say die, but that's a bit overwhelming. Um, if I my computer crashes or whatever, I'm gonna make you the co-host. Yeah, and that way um, it should the meeting should stay live if for some reason I lose that connection. No problem. problem. And I think the recording stays going if I remember correctly. So awesome, everyone. Um, oh, we're right at nine oh one. I still don't. I don't, see, I don't see Tom yet, but um, we were just going to have a, a quick intro just of, you know, welcome. We've been planning this thing um, for months, just, you know, getting together and talking about what to cover. Initially, we had planned for a two-day event, and then um, there just wasn't a lot of people signing up. And so we scaled it back to one day and, and figured, hey, this is the first one. If it goes well, you know, we'll plan for two days. Um, actually, also in the chat, just for fun, why don't you guys all mention, uh, oh, so, so Florida, Ireland, West Virginia, Poland, Finland, Montreal. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, mention also how long you've been using auto hockey. Uh, I've been, I think, I know it's over 10 years, but I'm, I can't remember exactly when I. Isaiah, how long? It's, I know it's over 10 for you as well, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, going 15 almost. It's awesome. been a long time since I started with this and still learning. There's a lot of things to learn, anyways. God, isn't it crazy it's the people all the time say that i'm like I'm, there's just it never ends you know which i well, suppose is a good thing it is <laughs> it would be pretty boring if you knew everything already of, of that one topic and then there's nothing else to learn you get bored pretty quickly so <laughs> i see 2005 so it's, T tn's making us do math um since 2005 um Felipe had two years, a couple of months. That's fine, Brian. Yeah, we're, we're all did in. And the other one, I guess, is like, do you have actually a background in programming at all, or is it just you started with AutoHotKey and you know that's all you've done? Twenty fourteen. Hey, Dimitri. Welcome. Let me let me unmute you, Dimitri, just since uh, you're going to be on this first conversation, which will start here in a couple of minutes um, of just V one and V two. Let me see if Tank, because I know Tank was going to see him and i pinged him earlier um i was going to have him weigh in a bit about you know the main conversion and switching over and trying to keep the forum you know sane is i guess the simplest way to say it geek dude yeah your background yeah you're you're in everything geek dude um programming awesome just on a hot key okay philip that's where i think the problem is that's funny yeah um SQL. Brian, I've done a lot of stuff with auto hockey with SQL. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my video where I use it to help type my um, SQL, but oh, mercy, it, it saved me so much time writing my templates for joins and whatnot. It's really cool. Let's try trying, and we're trying to so stick with the HK because we're cotton. Another Brian. I like that one of them said like extreme Excel auto automation. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not really automating Excel. It's like extreme automation of Excel. <laughs> I did I did some crazy stuff with Excel with AutoHotKey. Um, it, man, it saved us so much time. Jean, yeah, I know you've been working a long time with it. Let's start with games. Yeah, a lot of people I think start with games, Eugene. And I have no background with coding or programming. Yeah, cool, Robert, no worries. Neither did I. Honestly. Um, okay, so we're at nine oh five. Is there anything else we need to get? Uh, let's see. I still don't see Tom. I thought he would be here, but it's fine. So when when you have a question, and hopefully you all know this, um, how to bring up like the question mark symbol. Um, I in the emails I sent, I sent you know a hotkey how to do it. So that's what I've done. But you can hold on the Windows key and hit if you're using Windows ten, you know, or eleven. Windows key and either period or Windows key and semicolon, which I don't know why they made it with two hotkeys, but um, put in. So if you had a question, I'm going to do an example here in the chat. Um, so I'm going to type a question mark. Okay. And then you would put three of those. Let's 
So something like that. And this will help us spot that as we're as the panel is talking through stuff, if you have a question, it'll help us catch that. Because I'm sure over time, as the meeting goes on, we're going to have a lot of cross chat of people just talking back and forth, which is perfectly fine, right? That's what we want to encourage. This is why we're here, by the way, was to get people to be able to interact with each other. We could have easily just recorded videos and then played them, but that's not fun, right? We want to have the interaction and getting feedback from people and stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okie doke. Well, anything else? Um, I think we're, we might as well get, get going here. Oh, I, was that me in the chat? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Perfect. So let's see. Um, where are my notes? So the, yeah, the first one is, and I see Dimitri's here because he was going to be, Dimitri, are you, did I unmute you? I no, I unmuted. <clears throat> Um, so we were going to first start off, let me find my notes too, just to help us guide the conversation, right? But I plan, by the way, is to um, be more of a uh, MC in this event, and I, I'll still chime in on stuff. I'm going to be watching the chat and try to help administer and let other people do a lot more of the talking than with me. So uh, yeah, the first one is Let's just talk about who who in here. It's, oh, actually, you know what? Hold on, I have a poll. I actually created some polls ahead of time. What? No polls are. Oh man, <laughs> that's a little bit. You know, <laughs> it says no poll. All right. Well, I'll I'll create the poll. Um, Don't worry. In the meantime, I'll, let me go ahead uh, and, and ask the question. <laughs> so for, yeah, go for it. Exactly. So basically, what we're trying to one of the first topics that we're going to have today is basically. Uh, just touch up, and, and we have our opinions about version one of our hotkey and version two of our hotkey. But what we want to hear is actually the community's opinion, um, your personal opinion as which one we actually, uh, which one you prefer. And what we are going to discuss in general is the differences and probably a path forward to see how the community might transition into our hotkey two or if people are just going to decide whether or not. So the first question would be, have you been using AutoHot Key um, version two? Um, have you not? Do you have any opinions on it? So let's go ahead and see. What can you say in chat? Um, <laughs> I'm launching the poll on it. While uh, the poll is actually launched. There we go. I thought the polls were general. I created all the polls before, but apparently you have to tie them to a certain meeting. Mm -hmm. I know it's like. Is the, is the, oh, yep. So we're getting some some good feedback. It's awesome seeing so many people here. By the way, this is really cool. Um, if we yeah. had had this many people showing up to the webinars, we probably would have kept them going. But anyway, it's fine. So. Uh, it's interesting. There's still a lot of people here. And it, this is really fascinating given so many people here have also been using AutoHotKey for a long time. And maybe that's part of why they're not wanting to switch. Uh, right. But yeah, there's there's a few people that are, and of course I can't vote on it. I would be Me neither. I started <laughs> using it, but um, I was talking to Isaiah yesterday of like, I am sure at some point I will switch, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, I don't currently have plans directly right away to. Switch. I would definitely have answered like going full gangbusters on it. <laughs> Actually, I, I started, I, you know, I started playing with it. And then later on, I realized like, I don't want to write in V1 anymore. <laughs> and my brain just switched to it. Uh, sometimes I write code and then I figure out, oh, sorry, that was meant for out of hockey version one. Uh, but now my brain is already switched to version two. So that, can also happen <laughs> but actually i see that i'm not in the majority so i'm very much in the minority of people here um most of the people seem to have a very specific <laughs> answer to it right yeah that's a lot of actually trying that's funny hey that's a lot it's good good to good to see you here um <laughs> she's waiting for fine text to be ported to version two which is a really interesting point as well right it's like some people have we have a lot of libraries that we use and they're not available in v2 and until they are, you know, um, maybe we don't switch to that. Um, but a lot of the newer stuff only available in version two, so it it you know makes it a little um, tricky. Yes, it does. And Joe, also a lot of uh, libraries are getting converted, so um, 
And you also see that uh, actually the, the high level programmers who most of the time maintain the libraries, they also start uh, switching to version two. Right. So yeah, so right now there's a lot of people who haven't touched it. Yeah, and I saw someone saying I had an option in there I didn't list, but this is, I freehand typed it in a, in 30 seconds. So cut me yeah. a little slack, please. <laughs> now, here's the thing. What I'm actually kind of interested in right now is there is two answers in one of them that is not touched and don't plan to. So now here's the thing. How many people haven't touched it but are planning to? And how many people really don't plan to switch? That that uh, in there, I don't know what the percentage would be, but a lot of people haven't touched auto hotkey for sure. So that's like ad hoc conversion too, for sure. Exactly. So there are some people now answering in the chat, plan to, but haven't installed it yet. And there's a few things that we're going to discuss about that, which is interesting um, uh, when we have the panel already going. And I have a few things that maybe you don't know about it yet that might be okay for you to later on think about it a little bit better. Okay, let's uh let's start talking about once you um one of the two of you. So Dimitri, by the way, has led he led a webinar in version two. He's involved with the converter that he mentioned earlier. Um, I guess I should change my my notes up above my head here. Um, let's uh, let me put in the uh, I have a link to the converter. Yeah, it existed already, but it wasn't working anymore. So I I. Uh... I worked a little bit on it, and uh, it evolved uh, to the new beta version, and I think I did a great job. But of course, it's not, uh, it converts already quite good, but it's not perfect, of course. Uh, some some things are really hard to translate, just uh, and it starts to get complex very soon. And another thing is, most of the time you can shorten your code in V2. Uh, it's it's easier, by my opinion. Yeah, I'm I'm loving Brian M's comment. Windows Vista cured my addiction to shiny new toys, which <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> that is actually a very very uh, <laughs> true statement. Well, you know what though is what I would say is if if Windows Vista had been in beta for ten years. Maybe it wouldn't have been such a colossal, you know, crappy yeah. tool. Um, where in version two, you know, it's been it's been worked Forever. on forever. Yeah, that guy, he's really, really, um, uh, you know, specific. He wants everything to be working just fine. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. Why don't you guys go ahead and keep on talking a little bit about some of the things that you'll run into. Uh, when you switch, start switching to version two, some of the real pros I know from Dimitri talking to him is just the GUI stuff is so much more straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. So um, and, I, would, I would let you, Dimitri, go ahead because you have <laughs> actually a little bit more experience and have more in-depth uh, uh, information about how the hockey version two works. What is it that uh, you like the most? Uh, the fat arrow functions are really helpful to shorten your code, but yeah, maybe some people find it too advanced, but once you get to know it, uh, then it's quite useful. Um, wait, I, I, for example, I, I've made a, a quick example. I'll share my screen. Uh, so in uh, version one, if you want to make a small menu that just uh, shows a message box, you actually need to do it in, in two parts. One part is to define the menu, of course, and the other one is to handle the menu. Eh? But in uh, version two, yeah, you can just write it as it's just one line to, to add one. Yeah, it's it's way easier uh, just uh, and this is actually a fat arrow function so you just uh, it's almost the same as a a, a, a handler but uh, it accepts those parameters and then for example I could say give me the item name let's try it oh, no
So that gives me the item one. So right. So basically, uh, for those who are not familiar with arrow functions, um, in general, in our hotkey version two, at least, uh, it might work differently in other languages. But in our hotkey version two, it's just like if you have a function that only has one statement, you can actually compound statements with a comma or something like that. But it is meant for if you have just one action, the arrow is the same as saying return. That's what it is. So return message box, and it's just that one thing that you're going to do. So um, it allows you to very quickly make one action statements in the same line. For example, if you just click on the close command, uh, on the close, uh, the X button on your GUI, you just want to close the window. You don't want to display a message and then do this and do that and then close most of the time. So if you just want to perform one action, a fat arrow function allows you to just have one line of code instead of having to define a function as we usually do, which is a little bit more annoying. But um, not everybody likes the arrow functions because they can confu be co confusing most of the time. But again, for set timers, for message boxes and stuff like that, um, having an arrow function uh, syntax helps a lot in many cases. So that's basically what you like the most, uh, Dimitri. Is there anything else that you like about our hotkey version two? Um, it's also nice that you can uh, define functions inside functions. So if you specifically only want to use them in that section, then they're really close off of the other and they will not interfere in the rest of the code. That's also yeah. something that is really very clean. Uh, I actually definitely uh, was talking about that recently with Joe. I just figured out that I could actually define a function inside a function. And that usually happens when you have code, you have a function, right? That performs some actions, but you don't want those actions to be available outside of the code. That right away makes it so much easier to just define it inside that function, use it, and then nobody outside of the code, you cannot use that function anymore. I, I really love that. And I had some instances and I wanted that to happen. And in Arrow Hot version one, you cannot do that. So basically it is a little bit uh, better for me to control what is outside of, what can be used outside of my function, by the way. And a lot of, Big advantage is that you know all the time how the uh, parameters are interpreted because in version two, it's sometimes possible, for example, for message box, the first parameter is in a uh, text form. So if you say message box uh, and some text, then it doesn't need to be quoted. But in version two, you know that it's always interpreted as a variable. So it's always the same thing. And B1 is messing that up. And that's maybe useful and for some people, but yeah, it's not always the same thing. So it's, you always need to look back into the uh, documentation to know or just test it out uh, to know what the correct thing is. Now, um, I, I've seen two questions in the chat that I would like to kind of like address. One of them, uh, I think Anthony was saying, does version, does our hotkey version two use JavaScript for programming? No, not really. But the, the, there is a few things that look very similar to JavaScript. And some people don't like that. Some people do. So that's where the split opinion comes in because some people don't like the, you know, JavaScript like kind of syntax. Now, my opinion on the matter would be, if something is really popular, it might be because they're doing something right. So it is good to capture the things that are right and make it your own. The things that are not right, don't take them. For example, I really hate the triple equal sign in JavaScript. I don't, I don't know what, who came up with that one. I, do, I, wouldn't that, I wouldn't want that in our hotkey. We don't have it and that's okay. But the fat arrow function has very good um, use cases. And for that reason, I, I definitely welcome that particular addition. So 
it usually depends. There are some things that I don't like, and I hope that they are not integrated. But in any case, it's not really JavaScript. It's just JavaScript-like. And um, the other person, I think, uh, somebody was asking how difficult it is to, to switch your environment. That was John from version one to version two, when you have projects in both versions. When you install the new AutoHotKey version two installer, the best installer, it automatically set up the system in a way that when you double click uh, an AutoHotKey script that is for version one, it automatically launches with version one. If you, auto, if you double click a script that is for version two, it automatically launches with AutoHotKey version two. It is kind of like a launcher that decides with version two run. And you can configure it, you can disable that, or you can use, which I would re recommend as um, Geek Dude actually mentioned, the requires. It is kind of like a, a, a directive that you can put on top of your script that says requires auto hotkey and the version that it requires. And the launcher that I'm referring to sees that requirement and decides automatically which version of auto hotkey to run. So basically right now, as of beta seven, or I think as of beta three or something like that, um, you can install auto hotkey version two and it, you can have auto hotkey version one scripts and auto hotkey version two scripts with the same extension .ahk and the launcher will decide for you automatically which one to launch based on the requirement. And if you don't have the requirement, it would try to read the code and, and figure out if it is just for version one or version two. If it cannot figure it out, it at the end gives you kind of like a pop-up for you to decide if that script was for one or the other. So it has a, a very nice fallback uh, to really launch the script however you So switching to version two right now is not that hard and you can still use your scripts normally. I think Joe, uh, you might want to mention what issues you ran into with that particular type of, you know, the launcher. It was just really odd. It, there was, even though we had the requires, which by the way, and I, I put the link up earlier, um, we released a tool to go go through. If you haven't touched V2 yet, now is a great time to and write your own script if you don't want to use ours, we don't care. But um, to add requires and add the version 1.1, if that's what you're using, into all of your scripts. So when you do start adding version 2, it, it's simpler because right now everything you've done in version 1, so it's really simple, right? Probably. Um, but yeah. And uh, in mine, unfortunately, even though, because if it doesn't have the requires, it tries to look at your code and determine, you know, make a decision. But even though we had the requires in our scripts, mine were taking, what would you say, like two seconds or so to launch? Like it was, it was really noticeably slow, which yeah. we couldn't figure it out. Um, I, and, I, and I couldn't figure it out because in my case, it was not happening like that. So we didn't know if it was something about the machine or the setup where AutoHotKey was installed, but yeah. You have to keep in mind that as it is trying to decide stuff, it might take a little while. Um, we cannot determine exactly what was the issue, but it might happen. Now, somebody was asking is that if that arrow functions can always be, uh, if you can write uh, anonymous functions, instead of storing the function in a variable, yes, that is right. With fat arrow functions, you can definitely just write the parameters of the function without the name. And then the arrow function would go ahead and perform the action. Um, so, but it is not saved in a variable. So you cannot refer back to it again. It is for one time use kind of thing. So set timers and stuff like that would be a good example of where I would use a fat arrow function. Um, but uh, yeah. That's basically how it works. Zayas, have you, uh, Geek Dude asked an interesting question. Have you had it where you have, we talked about this just the other day, having more than one require statement in a script? Well, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I would assume that the script would pick one of the two. I don't think it will give me an error and I can definitely just try it out real quick. So let me share my screen real quick. Yeah, I, I think it's good practice, certainly in, in libraries, because uh, it could get confusing well, if you have version yeah, well, two and version one libraries. What we actually ran into the other day was, is Ace has been, because he does write our, some of our work, you know, he, he worked with me, um, in version two, 
and he was putting them the requires in the main script however if we're re referring to a library he wasn't putting it in there and that actually um isn't that what happened Isaiah? that that one of the sub things yeah so let, let me verify what happens if i have the two um so right now it it actually is grabbing the second requirement it says v2 but i have 1.3 so let me see if I switch this to the top. So I'm, I'm not getting an error because of having the two requirements, but it looks at like it grabs the last requirement. Uh -uh, no, it actually goes with the highest requirement. It doesn't matter where it's located at. It's, yeah, it's like, logical, the first one that he encounters. Right. Well, no, 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 no. So basically, I put it at the bottom, and it would still actually tell me that I need version two. Oh, look at that. It's still, none of them would work. So it doesn't matter which one I choose. It is actually <laughs> doing the, it's just choosing the opposite of what I'm running it with. Mm -hmm. So, so in any case, um, it is not a good idea to have the two requirements right now. I would say like what I would suggest, I would probably put it on the form as a wish list, is that the uh, script grabs the highest requirement available or probably the lowest, just to pick one, right? So, but right now it's just picking the opposite of what I'm running it with, <laughs> which is which is funny. It was un unexpected right there, but yeah. If you're requiring both, you're either you know much smarter than <laughs> us, or you know, or you're having some problems. But I think it, it should just grab either the minimum requirement. So mm -hmm. if you're requiring uh, version one, at least it should grab that one and and forget about the rest, maybe. Um, do we have anything else on specifically around the the pros and cons? Because I think also, you know, you, you guys talked about some of the pros. I didn't hear anybody mention cons for V2. Does anyone... uh, of course, you have the annoying thing that you, if you want to use a variable, you first need to define it. Uh, and actually, uh, at first, I, I really hated it because uh, it was annoying and you needed an extra line to, to do a, in a lot of times. But um, in the end, it's actually better because it that way you detect error a lot faster. So, so it's actually an advantage. Uh, okay. Um, it, it, however, um, this is the thing, Dimitri. You know, with auto hotkey, this is the thing that, like, I think most people and a lot of people here also said they've never used any other programming language, and that auto hotkey is often the first language you start with. And you just mentioned a thing of like, yeah, it's kind of annoying, but it's more efficient, right? Which is what people who've been using on hockey for years often care about, right? But when you're first starting out, I can tell you 15 years ago, I took a class of BBA. It was online. And that stupid having to define my variables first before I could do anything was one of the big reasons why I finally just said, screw it. I'm not, I'm not doing this. It was so ridiculous to have to go do some of the stuff. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. saying like, you got to get in the mindset of someone who's never programmed before. And mm -hmm. to me, this is something that can really stop people. Um, and it's it's one of the, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a big negative. It doesn't sound like it, you know, for people who are programmers. But if you're not a programmer, it's a, it's a much bigger deal than you suspect. I think yeah, but I think the annoying thing was uh, that you needed to define the type. And that was, yeah, for starters, it's annoying to Point. know what's the type. Uh, I don't know. It's an integer, a double. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's always something that you need to learn. But without the hotkey, you don't need to define the type. You just need to say, yeah, it exists. Right. And and, and this is actually uh, the, the, the diff divide that exists. You have people who are not programmers and they just want to express what they are thinking. I just want to verify if this path exists and do something. I don't want to deal with the fact that whether the variable is set or not set. That is a concept that is a very programming concept, like whether the variable is set or not. Um, what the, Joe's argue, Joe's uh, argues that as you're not a programmer, like you don't care about it and it could put you off if you have to actually go ahead and deal with those type of things. Now, on the other side, you have the people who are programmers who have been programming for a little while. Not only they are programmers in auto hotkey, they probably have seen other languages. And then you start getting these little issues, especially when the projects are big. Say, for example, John Lalonde. He has a very big project with 23 
or 30,000 lines of code. And if he runs that code and there's a variable that is not set, he will not figure that one out until sometime in the future, somebody tells him, hey, this thing is not working right. And now he has to hunt down why it is. And then he figures out, oh, that variable has no value in it. In our hard key version two, what is aiming to do with that is just, as soon as you type it, if you try to run the program, it will automatically tell you, hey, it looks like this variable, you have never assigned a variable to it. Is that okay? Do you really want to do that? If you say, okay, it will continue running fine, but it warned you about it. Now, some people find that warning annoying <laughs> and that's what comes about, but rest assured, you can turn off that particular warning you can use the warn directive to turn that off. And let me show you something interesting that probably you didn't know. Um, and basically it is that you can always, now in the newest version, try to use um, an onset variable and you can use the maybe operand, these two question marks. If you put two question marks, it will check if that variable is set and use it. If not, then you can use a default uh, value, whatever you want. It could be a, a text, it could be a string or whatever. Just think about it as the ternary operator, but instead of checking for two options, it's just checking whether the variable is set or not. So that would um, remove the warning. So right now, if I make sure that I'm running with version two, right now, if I make it like this, it would give me a warning. Oh, hey, this what this variable has never been assigned a bar, uh, value, right? Or if I use the maybe operand, it would decide to whether if it is set, use its value. If not, just show false. And I don't get a warning anymore. So this is something that if you are annoyed at the fact that you get this type of warnings, just make sure if you haven't actually defined or declared your variable, just use the maybe operand, which is two question marks, and it is not going to give you that warning anymore because it checks whether it's set or not first. <laughs> so that's one of the things that you can think. Now, regarding the really, uh, you know, uh, negative things about Auto Hotkey version two, I would say it is the the um, the learning curve has increased. Now you have to learn a few more things to be able to do the same things that you were able to do before. So before you were just typing whatever you can, whatever you wanted, and it made sense to you. Now you have a little bit more of a learning curve, especially because many commands that you're used to kind of like switched some things. Like for example, the message box command, sometimes you put the options first, then the title and then the text. That's what we are used to. But now in version two, the command parameters are switched. The first parameter is the text, then the options, then the title. And those kind of things kind of like threw you, it can throw you off. But with a good lexer or a good environment that gives you the prediction of the command and stuff, that can be lowered a little bit, but still you have a learning curve. Every time I'm using a command now, I find myself trying to figure out whether it works differently in version two than in version one, because some commands work differently, some others don't. So uh, the learning curve just went up a little bit. That's all. Yeah, and and again, it gets back to for for noobs, for people who have never programmed before, right? Which is one of the big things people why people stumble into AutoHotKey in the first place, right? Was it was so simple, right? So that to me is just a it's for any other language, I'd be like, it, so what, right? But for for AutoHotKey. Just given that's a big draw, it's just a little bit concerning. Um, Eugene actually asked an interesting question is, you know, is there a compiler for version two that kind of like with AutoHotKey H that makes it harder for people to easily decode the scripts? Is that, I don't think. Uh, right now, no, it is using the same AutoHotKey to EXC, the normal compiler that we have been using uh, for a long time. So there is nothing, um, there is nothing for, uh, obfuscating stuff and you know those kind of things like protecting it from being decompiled. Um, but I think uh, even does though it have, 
the stuff sorry for cutting in there does it have the um what are they called there's two the U, upx and um what's the yeah, other one you get the empress so empress. those 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 uh, compressing algorithms okay. you can use them exactly the same as before the only thing is as usual we always tell people okay so if i'm a programmer like me if i'm really interested in getting your code it doesn't matter how you compile that everybody it's on the door to your home right it it's, keeps the honest people honest it doesn't keep the criminals out no exactly so basically if there's somebody who is willing to spend the time and has the money and has the resources to grab your code and hack it they will do it adobe cannot stop it have you haven't you seen like you know people in the pirate bay using like adobe photoshop and microsoft, stuff? Yeah. microsoft cannot stop it facebook nobody can really stop hackers if they are really interested into it they will do it. Now, does that mean I shouldn't compile or make sure that it's not? No, you should. The only thing is that I want to just make clear, it doesn't matter how hard you try. There is someone out there that is going to do it, but they're the minority of people. Most of the people don't have the time. They're not interested. Or knowledge. Or the knowledge. So in the end, they, they it's not worth spending too much time and effort in something that, it, that a normal compilation, compression, and removing some text would do the trick with it. That's well, it. Yeah. And what we covered, and my IP lawyer did a, a webinar years back, but it, nothing's changed really, right? He did a really good thing, talk through of what you can do to protect yourself. One of the cool tips was just, hey, embed like your kids' birthdays or your spouse's birthdays and stuff in the text. And then that way, if because someone, you know, have them hidden in there, right? Don't make it obvious. And that way later, if you ever have to go to court or just go to even in person and say, you ripped me off. They're like, no, I didn't. You're like, well, then why are my kids' birthdays in your code? Please explain that to me, right? <laughs> so it's a fun little thing that you can do. It was an interesting one. <laughs> it may not be worth spending the money to find it, but it's still, it's, it gives you at least something to, to complain about. Um, yeah. I saw a geek, geek dude mentioned he, he, laments the removal of the plain text to where you could just assign you know variable to text especially if it had the double quotes in it which i i'm totally with you there geek dude i was really really disheartened when i heard that that was going away until i realized like python you know in other languages you can use either the single quotes or the double quotes to wrap your text and then i was like oh thank god okay it's <laughs> not actually it, but it's still <laughs> that would have sucked yeah uh, <laughs> uh, i saw a question there that I, I i don't really understand it it is uh ahmed i think uh, ahmed Ed x says like in v2 you have to replace the go-to's referencing a label which is more modern in programming do we have to do this for hotkeys too like goes up hotkey i think um the idea of labels in general uh we don't use it that often anymore there's a reason for that because labels, when you use them, the variables are global. And that usually is not a good idea in programming. So we're moving away from labels. It's not that they're bad, it's that it creates a little bit of a problem when debugging for people who are programmers, by the way. If you're not a programmer, you really don't care about that. If your script is very small, you're not gonna care about that. But in general, as soon as you start moving up uh, very more, more complex programs, having a lot of global variables is a problem. Now, uh, do we have to do this for hotkeys like go sub? You can still use the go sub command. You can still use it for hotkeys as usual, but now hotkeys and hot strings act as a function because you have to put the brackets around them for it to work. So they're really functions, by the way. Uh, I would def definitely stop using labels in general because we're moving away from the labels in general. But you can use functions or hotkeys and use the go sub for them, but not for the functions because functions, you don't have to use a go sub. You just call the function itself. So it, I always say, you know, a, a function is basically a go sub, you know, on it, is. it allows you to pass some parameters to it. And it is by far, and I was preaching this the other day, by far, if you're not, you know, building your own and using functions, it is the lowest hanging fruit ever in programming it is the thing that will just change your game if you're not using functions learn how to use functions it's oh yeah <laughs> crazy how powerful that is right Go. now uh, there's somebody asking if hk is really simple so it is it is a very good question um 
but I would say compared to other languages, I think I remember once, Joe, that I was showing you uh, a function in Stack Overflow of somebody that wanted to send some hot keys, uh, so, some some keystrokes into a window, and he was doing it in C in the C plus plus language, and it was a wall of text. And then in the end, he was just sending two keys. <laughs> and I was like, in our hot key, we do that in one line. That's yeah. it. Now, it is not about whether auto hotkey is simple or not. In auto hotkey, it's simpler to do certain things. Right. Because as soon as you try to do other things, auto hotkey is a nightmare. I will right. tell you, there are some things that uh, without a hotkey are really complicated to do, whether it's version one or version two. Auto hotkey is not designed for certain types of actions, right? So always use the best tool for the best thing, <laughs> you know, for, for, for your particular uh, situation. Auto hotkey is great for creating hotkeys, uh, creating hot strings, automating GUIs, and in general, trying to use com objects. As soon as you start moving away from that, things get more and more complicated. So yes, auto hotkey simple in what it was built for, <laughs> nothing else. Um, now, the next thing, uh, I'd like to shift part of, we can continue on if there's specific questions, but in very specific thing, like years and years ago, I was learning Python. And when I happened to be learning Python was when it was switching from version two to version three. And it took forever to make that transition. And also it was so confusing. Actually, at the same time, AutoHotKey was going from the vanilla 1.0 to 1.1. And if you guys that have been around long enough remember what the forum was like then, it was so confusing. You know, thankfully the version 1.0 to 1.1 syntax was so different, even for someone like me who at the time had never done any sort of programming and especially OOP type stuff. It was fairly simple to go, this is different, right? These two things aren't the same. Um, now, what where I'm going with this is just, we need to make sure as a community, how are we going to make sure besides using the requires command, which I think is a, a you know a must, every post like to the forum or Reddit or wherever, you know, needs to have that requires in there. But how are we going to make sure that we have a better transition than other languages have done? Uh, because it, it can be really a nightmare. Yeah, actually, um, as you just mentioned, if you're sharing code, any of you guys, if you're here, just if you're going to the post, uh, to the forum to post stuff, whenever you put a piece of code, try to add the requirement there so that we know what you're uh, uh, talking about. But in general, the, the function right now is divided into two sections. You have the auto hotkey help for version one and the auto hotkey help for version two. So we are expecting that you go to the right section of the forum. But again, later on, what happens if we are going to, if, if auto hotkey version <coughs> two becomes the, the main, um, the main <laughs> version of auto hotkey and the forum gets merged, then we will have some legacy code in there that we might not know that is legacy. So it's good to just put your requirements in any piece of code that you're sharing so that we know basically what it's all about. I always found it strange that uh, we we didn't use a different extension to just uh, make it easy to separate the two, two versions. Uh, but yeah, it's only temporary. Once we have all con converted everybody to V2, it's fixed. Well, I, I really doubt that's going to happen. I don't think this came up <laughs> earlier, right? But um, one of uh, I, I, maybe it got mentioned, but a whole thing with the V1 versus V2, the pros and cons, V1, there's an insane amount of libraries, you know, in posts and support available. And V2, it's, and someone mentioned in the chat, you know, they're relying on videos and there are not many people I know, as Ace, you've mentioned, you're going to try to make a few videos, you know, more videos on it, but there's not a lot of videos on it, right? Um, nor is there a lot of libraries and posts on it. And it's, it's just one of those things like that, hey, that, the, the, the message boards on auto hockey aren't going away, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, are we, and I had talked to Tank, who's the, Tank is the admin of the main admin for the auto hockey forum. Um, he's going to join here in a while, by the way, I pinged him. Uh, but sh the question is, should we have a different sub forum? Should we, should we have an entirely different website? You know, that would be one simple way to, to make it easier to, to know. But then 
we'd probably lose a lot of people in that that's process. The pro that's the problem. It would split the community in a way that it, it is not like a very uh, good thing. Now, I really doubt that Auto Hockey version one is going to go away anytime soon because there's a lot of critical scripts out there. Th th that's the other thing you, you don't even know, but there's a lot of programs that are written in Auto Hockey. I have seen them, like I, I open them and I and then I go like, Huh, this looks like auto hockey, and, and sure enough, yeah. it is. Look at look at how VBA, you know, is still in Excel, and this is from how long ago? Like, you know, what I mean, it's, yeah. It's so, it is, yeah, it's gonna be around for a long time. Now, whether version two gets adopted quicker, quickly, and if it is better, that has that remains to be seen. Now, for the older people, like the people who have been coding in auto hockey for a long time we might switch now after a while when a lot of people have been using our hockey version 2 for a while the newcomers what they're going to fi find is version 2 and they're going to learn it from the start without understanding version 1 so i think the people who have been using version 1 for a long time will have a harder time switching than the newcomers who just arrive and see version 2 and that's that's how it is you know i think i think um for now the question of how the community would move, I think it's not going to move that much right now. <laughs> right now, it's going to stay very, very. What I was going to say is, is, is uh, I, I hear you, and I don't actually disagree. However, the one caveat I'll throw in there, just because I know I've talked to Tank a lot about this topic. If you remember, it was quite a while ago now, I don't know, eight years ago, wherever, when the, the, when the, the new forum came up because whoever it was wasn't managing the old forum and Tank just, he's like, I'm just going to create a new forum and see, you know, because no, this other person's not managing the, the current one properly. I'm going to create a new one. And the amount of people that switched over and started using it was crazy how how fast people how did fast it. How fast it was. It was really <laughs> amazing. And then I think it was Polythene, is that who it was? Finally saw that like the change and realized, you know what, there is a big drop. People want this. So, okay, you know, we'll revert the the older forums to the newer one. So anyway, it negated the whole thing. Right. It, I'm just, it was just to throw it out there of like, man, you know, people are willing to to move around. It it, it was really it, interesting. Like, like I, I think I would say like if the older version has enough problems that people want to move away from it that would be great but i think without a hotkey that's not the case our hotkey was working very fine for a long time people are even asking why do we need to switch but here's the thing it happened with out of hotkey version out of hotkey l it was what is called at the beginning so we had version one of out of hotkey and then out of hotkey l and everybody was like why would i want calm objects like i don't want that in the end when we switched now nobody uses version one I think with a little bit of time, it might happen similarly to version two. I, by mistake, switched. And after I started using it, my brain is thinking out of hot version two. I, I don't it, want to go there. I accidentally that. wrote one of our scripts the other day in it. That's, what, That's I what I mean. And 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 I just noticed the problem when you mentioned it. Hey, please, this this thing without a hot version two, I'm not, I'm not into that right now. And I'm just like, did I write that in version two? <laughs> yeah. Because it's simpler, uh, you will see. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, A H R E and Aaron. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. But what I would say is what you're saying. There's, you know, it, no one's disagreeing that it, it's going to be messy. What right. we're trying to do is minimize the mess, right? Like yes. I think everyone agrees it's it's not going to be fun. But it's hey, I don't know if thankfully, thankfully compared to like Python and other languages, we for the most part have one forum we have one reddit you know we have one of these things right and so i think it, there's a chance if we actually get together as a community and agree on something there's a chance that we can actually really help that facilitate that change right um, compared to the other languages that were so vast and so many different things good lord what a mess right like i i agree with those i don't know how you you know it, it's much harder that is correct yeah, I created the converter, so that should help uh, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. now on the forum, sometimes you get a question. Yeah, I'm trying to convert it to version two, and I just put it into my converter, and most of the time it works fine. Yep. Awesome. There you go. There you go. 
cool. Is there anyone else got anything else you want to talk about on on V two and V one? And um, let me go find my notes and see if was there anything else that we had lined out. I don't think there was. I would just simply remind everybody that it seems to be that the newest libraries are being done for Ava Hot Key version two. Right now, yesterday I was speaking to one of our clients. And we were having a lot of issues with the Internet Explorer control. And then we saw that um, there is a, a developer, a Chinese developer called Tikvai. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. And he created a library for the WebView 2 controller. I'm not really sure if that library is available for version 1 of Arahaki. I know that it is for version 2. And that means if you want to use something better than Internet Explorer, you will be forced to use version two if there is no library available for version one. So the, the, the most active developers and the ones who are actually kind of like on top of AutoHotKey, they're creating stuff for version two. So it might oh. feel like you will need to use it. You know what, I have a great question because um, I was writing back and forth with Gswig the other day and Gswig is, he's doing a lot of development on version two, helping Lexicos. Uh, and then he he also backports a lot of stuff, new functionality that's in V2 back to V1. And I told him my personal opinion was, I think this prevents people from making the switch, right? Like that new functionality is going to make people switch. That's why they would switch. He had the exact opposite opinion. He thought if people adapted their V1 to use those things, it's simpler to switch to V2. Right. I'm curious what you guys think. Like, I don't think there's a quote unquote right answer. Right. But I am curious what you guys think about that. Of, do you think backporting fun, some of the new functionality to V1 is a good thing or is it going to keep V1 around longer? My opinion would be that it would become a little bit messy. Then you will have, uh, yeah. Yeah. It that would be chaos in, a, in V2 language. No, that is right. But the thing is, a lot of people uh, do not see the fact that there are not many developers available for Auto Hotkey. So if there were like a, a bunch of developers for our Hotkey version one, I think backporting would be great. And if there's a problem, they can fix it. But now you have this guy, which is Lexicos, focused on Auto Hotkey version two. And he's a person who I, I've noticed that he has this, this strong will <laughs> of making this thing. Just imagine 10 years just thinking about that one thing. You know, that he has a very strong will. He is right now not interested at all in backporting stuff to AutoHotKey version 1 because that would distract him from version 2 because as soon as something is not working as it's supposed to be, he's not going to be able to go ahead and fix that and AutoHotKey version 2 at the same time. So he's not interested in that. If there are developers out here who have the skill to actually go ahead and um, do the backporting, I would assume that at some point, yeah, that is possible. But whether that will keep people to switch uh, from switching to Auto Hotkey version two, I definitely think so. If you're comfortable in one thing and now that thing has the same things as the other thing, then why would I need to change to the other thing? Um, that's basically what is going to happen. Cool. There are actually libraries who try to uh, add uh, V2 functions into version one. So it's not that complicated, but yeah, then you, you need to use a library. Awesome. Does anyone else have if they want to chime in on this? We got a couple more minutes before we're switching over. Um, I see is is what, what oh the SQL Light three, yes, cool, yeah. Oh, my SQL. Uh, I saw a cook. Uh, um, Maestrith, I saw you're here. Did hey. no, never mind, because I know you haven't switched to V two. I was going to ask you because I know you mm -hmm. created a library for us with my SQL, but um, I don't think you've actually um, done anything with it. And uh, Maestrith, let me. I don't know if you want to chime in here. Um. Did you have you yet looked at V2? I have not had time, no, unfortunately. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for 
Jordan. Uh, the next one, actually, hopefully you're going to stay around because I was hoping you would help answer some questions to it, which we'll switch to in just a minute. But we're going to be talking about um, the uh, best programming approach and which one you want to take and why. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, anyone else got anything else? Last last chance. Or, um, <laughs> is there any what anything new you've done in V two that you were like amazed? Actually, you know what, Isaiah, a perfect example is that crazy executing JavaScript within V two. You know, with within Auto Hotkey using the methods like um, <laughs> JavaScript methods within Auto Hotkey. It was we did a video on it because it was just it it melted my brain of. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who are actually familiarized or code a lot in JavaScript, there was a library. And again, this is what I meant. Uh, this library for now, I have only seen it for version two. It was created by Lexicos. And again, he doesn't care about version one. So he just did it for version two. And it allows you to kind of create an object. And it reads JavaScript, like real, you know, normal JavaScript functions. And it converts those JavaScript functions into code that can be executed in AutoHotKey in AutoHotKey uh, syntax. I, I don't know if I could take the last four minutes to just show a little example of that. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. And this is something, let me just go ahead and do this. No, that's not what I meant. So we have this particular project. Um, yeah. Save that. In this particular project, uh, we're working for, for a person who needed some very particular uh, way of working with um, uh, some, uh, how do I say? Uh, some information from Word and stuff like that, but he is a JavaScript coder and he already had functions created. So what we what I did is that I loaded this particular function right here, uh, which is a, a class. I, I read his functions, which are in this particular JavaScript file. And then I executed that because it is a code. I just executed it. At the beginning, you don't think nothing is happening. But what I what this did is that it grabbed all the functions that are defined in this particular JavaScript code that he had on already. And now later on, I can just call my object with the name of his function. So this function here or this method is not defined in our hotkey at all. This was defined in his JavaScript code in here. But now I can call it as if it was out of hotkey code normally, which was something that blew my mind. It was great. It was very interesting. Uh, and we actually got it uh, very, uh, and just to show you, um, let me double check here. This is basically how it looks like. So he's the, the, the code that he wrote is pure JavaScript code. And basically the only thing that he did was one of the, this is the function that he defined and he defined it purely in JavaScript, as you can tell. Um, and basically he did his thing. He knows how to code in JavaScript, but he's, he was not familiarized with auto hotkey and he wanted his function to work in Windows. And that's the reason why we kind of like try to bridge the gap with it between his code and auto hotkey. And we got this thing working in a very, very interesting way that, yeah, again, this library that can do that is using the Chakra engine, which is the edge engine um, to run the JavaScript code, but it's only available for version two. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. So a couple more questions here. Uh, actually, let me let me address the statement first. Geek, you had mentioned there's a, a Discord set for a bot that has for V2, and the little um, the bot will run your V2 code and then chat back and anything for you to say, see in a message box, which is pretty awesome. And then Eric was just accessing. Um, I assume is there any HK DLL for V2? 
H K O D L L. Um, so Auto Hotkey H is the one that has the Auto Hotkey DLL, and Auto Hotkey H is completely compatible, and it is actually version two. So it is compatible and uh, um, with version two and has what you're looking for. So what I would recommend you then is just taking a look at Auto Hotkey H and verifying the version that it's uh, better for you. The only thing is that Auto Hotkey H has a few quirks uh, about using it the first time, which I found it a little bit complex for some people, but definitely that would be the answer for you. You would have to look at Auto Hotkey H for it. And I'll, um... I'll put it over my head here, but we actually did a webinar with Hotkey, if I remember correctly, uh, is the author of it. And the other big thing I would say about version H is it's multi-threaded. Yes. Just to answer that one last question, uh, does anybody has an extension with debugger to work with V2 already? Yes. And the reason why, one of the main reasons why I'm actually coding in our Hotkey version two right now more than version one is because the VS Code Lexer and debugger that come with VS Code or that you can download for VS Code, they are amazing. I, I, I cannot really state how good they are. So um, basically I would definitely recommend you, and now that I have my, my VS Code open, I can just show this real quick. Let me just one second. And we're out of time, I guess, so make Yes, sir. <laughs> Just take a look at those two, the Auto Hotkey 2 language support and the VS Code Auto Hotkey debug plugin. If you, um, if you go to our page on V2, which I was showing earlier, Actually, we have a yeah. webinar showing, you know, setting it up, right? Yep. The, the different extensions, so awesome. awesome. All right, so, I so, see Tanky's there. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. I flaked no about worries. the time of day. Um, I'm going to stop the recording and just so I don't have a nightmare editing these things later, and then I'll start it back up again. So stop recording. Yes.